Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I want to introduce you guys to microscopes. Not surgical microscopes, but laboratory microscopes. Now, there are four main types of microscopes. There is bright field, there's dark field microscopes, there's phase contrast microscopes, and there's fluorescence microscopes. That's the main categories. I'm sure that there's some other variants that are very special and very expensive. However, there's four main types. The most common one is gonna be called the bright field microscope. And the bright field microscope is like this guy right here. I've got an Olympus BX41. And what a bright field microscope is, is it has a light at the bottom, shines up through your sample, where it comes up into here and your viewer views it. There's also one called a dark field. Now, the dark field is the exact opposite of a bright field. The bright field, the light shines through your sample, and from there, the contrast of the sample is how you're able to view the sample. If there's not very much contrast, like a clear sample or a waterborne, some bacteria, some tissue samples, um, you have to stain the sample in order to be able to see it on a bright field. And because of this, they have something called a dark field microscope. And it's almost exactly like a bright field, except it takes a opaque disc and it puts it right in the middle of the light pattern. So if your light is here, they put a disc here so that you are not looking straight at the light. What happens is the light wraps around the disc, which hits your sample from the sides. So it actually illuminates your sample on a dark background. It's, it looks like an, a photo negative, if you guys are familiar with that, which is a very cool way of thinking about it. So it, the cool thing about uh, dark field microscopes is that you can see really clear and small objects much better than with a light field, especially with like bacteria and like living tissue and stuff. And you don't necessarily need to stain the slide to see the contrast, just the tissue densities with a dark field show contrast. So the dark field looks almost exactly like a light field, except there's gonna be a disc someplace, okay? So that's, that's the bright field and the dark field. Now we're getting into the expensive ones, guys. Not that those aren't expensive. This one right here, the Olympus BX43. Now this one is a bright field just like that one, but Look at this headstock that they put on there. It's almost exactly like this one. See that? Just this piece comes off, and they put this one on here. So let's go over some of the details of these guys, and that way there, so I can continue talking to you guys and you understand what all the components are, all right? We're gonna start at the very tippity top up there. What we have up here are things called oculars and your oculars are gonna have an inscription on the side, which is their magnification. Now, on laboratory microscopes, usually what you will have is you will have one stationary ocular, and you are gonna have one that moves. So what you are gonna do is you put your sample here, you adjust it so that it's in focus on your one eye, and on the other eye, you're going to adjust it so that it pops with the 3D effect, the stereoscopic effect. Because everybody's vision is different. So it's a quick and easy way of doing it. Now with surgical microscopes, both oculars are usually adjustable. But with these ones here, they've made it simple. One of them stationary, you adjust your sample until it's in focus, and then you adjust one ocular until it, it really pops and comes into stereoscopic 3D. So that is the oculars. The oculars slide into something called a binocular. Go figure, right? Now, binoculars are almost always removable from microscopes. You can see I have a little set screw right here for this one. Now, this here is a flexible binocular. You can see how it's flexing here. Some of them are stationary, uh, which obviously these ones are way too expensive to have stationary. <laughs> but binoculars, like this one, see how it can rotate side to side? That's a very unusual feature. But what they almost always have is something called an IPD, which is an interpupillatory distance. See that? 
and that is the distance between your eyes because human faces are all different your interpupillatory distance is going to be different for everybody so that's that adjustment and often they'll have one more pivot point right here where it attaches to the base so that is your binoculars and they're very expensive binoculars are usually thousands of dollars so don't drop them if you ever do take one off a microscope don't drop them they're very expensive hell just the oculars themselves are about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars each there's two of them twenty four hundred bucks okay don't drop them so next thing down is going to be your headstock which you can see as i explained already there's multiple different types of headstocks beneath that is your turret and this is where the different types of microscopes really start to shine so your turret contains all your objectives and your objectives are different magnifications and you can see here this one here's got three of them this one here has two of them and based on the type of microscope is going to have the type of objective like a fluorescence microscope is going to have a fluorescence objective and a standard microscope is going to have a uh, standard type of objective now these ones have like 10 100 300 something like that magnification and all these magnifications add up to be your final overall ratio okay so we have your oculars your binoculars your headstock we have your turret you have your objectives next is your stage just like a, a performing stage Ta -da! it's a stage your stage on these microscopes moves all around it's got an x and y axis okay and right beneath your stage is going to be something called a condenser now your condenser is basically just that light patterns tend to want to go off to the sides you know they always want to flail outwards well when you increase your magnification you are changing the, the height and when you are making your aperture smaller and smaller and smaller because you're increasing your magnification well you're going to have less light coming in to your objective so it's going to get darker and darker and darker as you increase your magnification so how do you compensate for that well right here you have your condenser and you can adjust your condenser to compensate for your magnification ratio so if you flip between your objectives and the sample gets darker well that's simple you just adjust down here you refocus the light think of it as two triangles apex to apex so your your bottom triangle is your condenser it wants to condense the light down to a triangle and you have to think of your objective as a topwards triangle facing downwards okay and you want those two points to kind of match up to be like the perfect amount of light based on the the objective okay so we have our stage we have our condenser beneath our condenser which you know you can move your condenser up and down and the condenser has an aperture which will increase and decrease the surrounding light around the outside of it i mean you aren't going to use all of these features most often they leave it just wide open um but you know if you're looking at certain types of samples you really want to be able to adjust every light pattern at every stage because some things the difference in contrast between tissues is very very minute so that's why we have all these crazy features on these microscopes so right beneath your condenser is your aperture can you see this this guy here the aperture is always closed aperture is all the way open it's it's an iris just like in your eyeball okay and there's always a glass that's right there and the, the glass will have different filters it's like a coating that's on the outside of it so that all these optics are coated with a certain type of coating and that will allow certain light to penetrate and it will enhance light patterns so it will improve clarity okay so there's going to be different filters that you can put into these based on what you're doing. Uh, here, let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Maybe get you guys a better view. So these guys here, you can see uh, they're pretty dirty. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. I'm going to show you guys how to tear some of these down. And we're going to clean them real quick. 
just a very generic PM, okay? So underneath this filter glass right here, and underneath your aperture, I have a dimmer, and there is a channel that comes to the back of this microscope to a halogen bulb right here. So this is an older model. All the newer ones use an LED bulb. Very nice. LED bulbs don't have that, that crazy infrared intensity of a halogen. You can actually feel the heat coming off that thing. And that's the infrared. So one of the other things I want to point out to you guys is right back here is your stage adjustment knob. You see that? So there's going to be a macro adjustment and a micro adjustment. You see that? That's micro. This one right here is macro. You see how the platform moves drastically versus this guy? And then behind the knob, right back here, is something called a tensioning ring. All right? So you adjust the tension ring, and what that does is it adjusts how difficult it is for this knob here to spin. Now some doctors, especially females, they like this to be more loose. And some doctors, males, I don't know, they just tend to like it more stiff. So when they say that it's all bound up and you can't really move it very much, ah, just go in and adjust your tensioning ring and show the users how to adjust their tensioning ring and you're going to solve some problems. All right, so that's your light channel to your bulb and then there's an integrated power supply on most of these except for the LED models. The LED models have an external power supply. We'll get to that in a minute. So that is all the features of a generic a bright field microscope, okay? Let's take a look over here at the BX43 with a fluorescent headstock, okay? So it's almost the exact same microscope here up. You know, we have the same chassis, except we have an LED bulb. Uh, I have my dimmer on the front of this guy. We have the aperture, we have the condenser, all the same, right? The stage, just the same. We have a turret with uh, different objectives, but mind you, remember I said fluorescence microscopes have fluorescence objectives, and right here it's got an inscription on them that has got FL. Let you know. So the difference in this microscope versus that one over there is this big old honking thing up here, and I'm not even going to pretend to know what every single little feature does. I know that there's different filters, there's different shutters, they have Right here, you can see that this is on bright field, but sometimes this one here will have a little ring in it, and that will set you up for dark field and for um, phase contrast. Sometimes they can do different things like that. But anyway, the important thing of this is in the very back. You see this nozzle coming out the back? That right there is a optic where a fiber optic will connect to. So the fiber optic, it's a tiny little one. It connects right here, and then this spreads the light. Okay, and then that light comes up into here, and this guy right here, being fluorescence, it shines light on your sample at a different angle than what a traditional bright field does. So that's what this headstock is, and there's an external light source, just like a surgical light source. I do believe it's halogen. They have very expensive bulbs. They're like 400 to 600 bucks for those bulbs. So you gotta be careful and know what you're doing when you're taking them apart, because if you pop one of those bulbs, it's high pressure you're in trouble. But this one here is exactly like that one over there, except for the headstock being different, and I can swap the headstock around. That's one of the cool things about Olympus and some of these major manufacturers. There are some other options, but the biggest difference right here is this guy. It has an external power supply, which it powers the LED bulb, which is a very cool feature. It makes that light nice and cool. But I am not going to open that guy up. Let's take this one over here, okay? Let's take the BX41. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to take it apart uh, piece by piece, and I'm going to show you how to clean it. Um, we are not going to go crazy in depth. It's just going to be a uh, rough generic cleaning, the same that you would probably do versus maybe a microscope professional. The number one thing, guys, you got to have clean hands. Do not touch the glass on any of these like don't put your finger up here don't put your finger down here don't touch the glass with your bare hands the oils that are on your skin it'll contaminate the glass and you will get a rainbow effect when you look through it 
and you, you might not notice it, it might look like it's clean, but the dock will notice it for sure. I mean, if you stare through a microscope for a couple hours, you're going to notice a rainbow hue to it, and it's going to give you headaches, and they're going to complain. Do not touch the glass. So, when you are going to do microscope PMs, clean your environment. Do not flat surface a bunch of screws and stuff, okay? Have a clean environment and get some gloves. I have a box of gloves here. I have some sanitary wipes because one of the first things that you want to do when you have a microscope is you want to wipe it down, okay? Not only because they might be nasty, but there's dirt and dust and all sorts of stuff on the outside of a microscope. You want to make sure that that bad boy is nice and clean because if you touch it with your gloves to even reposition the microscope, then you could be picking up contaminants that you will be using to touch the optics, okay? So number one thing that you wanna do, clean the outside of your microscope, get the dust, get the contamination off of it. Notice my, my rag is a sani wipe. I'm not cleaning the optics with a sani wipe. You guys, I know what you're thinking. I'm not doing it. I'm getting around all the surfaces, the areas that I'm gonna be touching with my gloves because I do not want oils, contaminations like grease, something like that grease would be miserable to get off the glass okay so we want to clean all these areas oh see there's grease right there and that was on the dimmer knob I'm, I'm almost definitely be touching the dimmer knob so make sure that all of these areas right here are nice and clean okay so now that the area is clean you're gonna put on your gloves a nice brand new set of gloves just like when you're working with halogen bulbs, you don't want to touch the bulb because your oils from your hand will contaminate the bulb. A few things that I'm gonna have, I have Zeiss wipes, all right? These are inexpensive. They're brand name Zeiss wipes, which means the material is perfect. It does not leave a residue. You'll see, these things are wonderful. I love Zeiss wipes, they're my absolute favorite. They come in a box of like 50. Some of you guys might be, be like, oh no, don't use those. See these guys right here? These here are, uh, these ones are Cardinal Health brand, but the long wooden uh, Q-tips, clean, unopened, absolutely necessary, because when you start pulling this stuff apart, if, if your microscope hasn't been shown love in a while, it's gonna need some love. And I mean, maybe some lubrication on the ways to which you're gonna put some lubrication on it and then you're gonna get rid of it. Do not lay an oily or dirty rag or consumable on your table because you're going to touch the table with your gloves you're going to contaminate the glass notice the trend here guys do not contaminate the glass this is a huge thing okay so one of the first things that i'm going to do is i'm going to take my oculars off now these ones don't have the eye ring these ones here are just a solid piece and the glass is recessed from the surface so it's okay, since my table surface is nice and clean, to place those down. And my binocular is affixed, and I'm not gonna shove nothing down the binocular. Don't shove nothing down the binocular. Because if you shove something down the binocular and you dirty the glass inside here, it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Now, the best you can do is maybe puff some clean, clean air down in there. I, I'm not talking about breathing. Your breath has got all sorts of contaminants that, that will dirty that. And it's very rare that these are dirty down inside here anyway. But I get a good look, make sure there's no chips of glass or no, no surprises, like maybe a floating piece of glass that's down inside the tube does happen, especially if they're rough handling. Now these ones here look like they're very clean. The tube where the ocular slide in looks very clean. So I'm gonna be very careful not to touch that again and I'm gonna open up a Zeiss wipe and I'm gonna attack the outer surface, not the inner surface. Again, it's recessed, it is a pain. Do not shove nothing down in there if you don't have to, okay? We're just worried about cleaning the outer surface of the ocular, which is the piece where the eye goes in. This is the dirtiest piece on the entire microscope, guaranteed. So I'm gonna use a piece of my Zeiss wipe And what I'll do is I'll wipe it to clean it. And then I'll rotate it in the sunlight 
and see if there's any debris. Make sure that there's no contamination on there, okay? Perfect. These ice wipes do such a good job. Now there's, like I said, there's a coating on the glass here. So if you use standard things like rubbing alcohol, you could damage, you probably will damage the coating. And Zeiss wipes are soft, they don't leave lint. They've got an alcohol slash uh, ammonia type of uh, substance on there. It evaporates rather quickly. So my ocular, I put it back in. Do not put it back down on the table, it's clean. Put it back where it needs to go. So let's take my other ocular. I'm gonna use a new piece of the rag that's why I'm holding it very, very oddly because I'm cleaning with one surface of it and then I'll flip the rag to a new piece and then I will slowly go around it. And what I'll do is I'll look up at this, up at the light at an angle and you want to see if there's any debris, anything across the surface of the glass. When it's not, that's why I that very last pass I do a very slow spinning direction cleans leaves a perfect finish on the outside so you are going to check your binocular to make sure that your adjustment goes the full range plus and minus okay so this binocular is good the next thing that we are going to do i'm going to take these objectives off and remember where you took them off because that's one way to piss off your customers is if you take them off from someplace and you put them back in the wrong order remember these guys use these microscopes all day long some of these doctors have very particular settings so what I'll do is the same thing as with your oculars I'll take the objective off I'll give it a swipe don't shove nothing down the back it should be clean that's why we got clean gloves right so I will wipe it in the same way I'll give it a, a little quick scrub and then I'll we'll take a clean piece and I'll do a circular swipe. Then you hold it at an angle to make sure that the glass is nice and clean. And then place it exactly back where you found it before you move on to the next objective. So here we go, I'm placing it back. All right, so this one here, I'm gonna have to adjust this guy because you don't want to scratch it. Now I've got one hand beneath it and one hand unscrewing it so I don't drop it down on the stage like that. It's gonna, it's gonna, this one here is kind of big, it's kind of heavy. And I can see that it's got a lot of scratches on the brass. So same thing. Do a quick scrub and then we're gonna do a slow one. Ooh, this guy was dirty. Beautiful. So this is a tiny, tiny aperture on this objective, okay? And there was some goo on there. And that will show up. It'll limit some of the light that's reaching the doctor's eyes. So that's what I did, is I gave it a really good scrub. I'm taking a look for any chips. Looks like it's very clean. Backside's nice and clean. It goes exactly back where I found it. Be careful now that the opening is nice and clean. Don't drag it on anything. Don't, don't damage it. Jeez. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this turret here has only got two objectives and it's got one open piece. Now that should have a cap on it because you do not want dust getting up inside your turret and on the back side of your objectives because that is extremely hard to clean. So I wish I had the replaceable parts to fill those two holes, but I don't at the moment. So I'm gonna press on. So I'm making sure that my stage is clean. I'm using the rest of my Zeiss wipe. You know, I'm trying not to waste anything here. I'm moving the objectives out of the way so that I can scrub the rest of the stage. All right, so now that that's done, 
Now we want to take a look at the stage. So I want to move it throughout its range to and fro, make sure that nothing's dragging, no grinding sounds. We want to check for debris. Now these two right here, these V grooves, they're called the waves, okay? And you want to check and make sure that there's lubrication on those waves. Do not let your waves dry out. You don't want to over lubricate them because again, any oil that'll be remnants on the outside, people are going to be touching stuff and you don't want them to contaminate their microscope. Th these waves right here look like they're beautiful. They're well lubed. Uh, this doctor almost certainly takes care of their, their own microscope. So that is those two things. Now we're going to move down here, down to the condenser, all right? Now this guy right here, you got to be very careful. There's set screws that are holding it in. So I'm going to loosen up all the screws. There is a um, V groove and it should slide right out. There we go. So this is what the condenser looks like. All right, you can see the aperture on the inside. See that? See all the leaves to the aperture, how they open and close, just like the iris of the eye. There is some oil and contamination around the outsides of this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have my uh, Sani wipe here. I'm gonna wipe that down because I don't know if that's goo juice, like human goo juice, or if that's lubrication. I don't think it's lube. It didn't, it didn't spread like oil. Oil can be a real pain. Let's check this guy, make sure this guy's clean. So all the leaves are in an excellent condition of the iris. They slide nice and even. That's one of the things I'm looking for. You close it all the way down and you make sure that they're all nice and even. If one of the leaves is up, uh, it's open too far, then this whole guy has to get sent off for repair. This one is perfect. Don't shove anything on the back side of this because it should be clean. So the surface that you're going to want to clean is this end right here, which is the side that faces your objective. And I scrubbed a little bit of weird stuff off the surface of it. And then you hold that at an angle, make sure that there's no rainbowing. Oh, it looks good. Looks really good. Okay. And then you're going to sit this unit back on its cradle and make sure that the scale is facing out because you don't want the doctor to look at the side for their scale because they have their settings that they remember, okay? Make sure that your iris moves from one range all the way to the opposite side. And then we're gonna go ahead and raise the condenser all the way up. Let's get this guy all the way back where it belongs. There we go. Okay. So my condenser wasn't seated completely in its cradle. It was it was a little bit proud, so I had to reseat it. You want to make sure it's completely in there. That way there the two triangles that I was talking about line up perfectly. Okay, I'm going to raise it all the way up, make sure that they're lined up, they look really good. The next thing that we're going to worry about is down here, we have that filter glass that I was talking about. Let's get rid of those. Now before I get to the filter glass, because I was touching the ways and a few other things, let's go ahead and change out the gloves. That's why I have a whole box of gloves here, guys. Sometimes when I'm working on surgical microscopes, I can change my gloves six times throughout a PM easily. Just when I'm cleaning the optics, because as soon as they get contaminated with anything, you should change them out because you don't want to cross contaminate. So I've got another Zeiss wipe here. I'm gonna go ahead and crack it open. Here's my filter glass. I'm gonna remove it. Now you can probably see there in the video that there's a little purplish hue. You see that? That is because it's set for a very particular wavelength to block a very particular wavelength. It says LBD IF. 
I don't really know what it stands for, but it matters to somebody. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take this guy here, and let's go ahead and turn him on. Okay, I do see a little bit of a burn mark in on the glass on the inside, and this guy here is very dirty you're getting that much reflection because it's got a lot of dirt and grime on it. So I'm going to encase it in my wipe and just kind of slowly clean off those surfaces. Do not scratch this guy. So that's why it's very important that you keep everything as clean as possible because one speck of sand and you could be scratching the heck out of these surfaces. Right. So same thing, hold that at an angle. Make sure that uh, your filter glass doesn't have any debris on it. And now the lens right here, I'm just going to put this guy down in it. Make sure that I get all that debris off it. There was a big old spot on there of some sort of juice. <laughs> Right, I'm going to put the filter glass back in, check the iris to make sure it goes throughout its range. And one other thing guys, when you're working on microscopes, when you are done, make sure that you open the apertures all the way up. Just as a habit, because doctors, if they see this right here, they're going to think that their microscope doesn't work. When in fact it's just that the aperture is closed, because some of these doctors never ever touch these apertures. So if your iris is all the way closed, and the doctor never adjusts it, he wouldn't think about that. He's going to put in a work order for a broken microscope. So just a word of caution. It's happened to many of us. Open all the irises all the way up. Okay, so I'm not going to lubricate the ways on this guy because it's, it's actually looking really good. Um, the tension ring works really good. Everything is looking really good on this guy. Dimmer. My optics are clean. So this microscope here just needs an electrical safety check and it's good to go. This one over here, just got a few more things to check, but it's basically the same process. You're going to start at the top, work your way down to the bottom. Don't clean any surfaces that you don't have to. Now I got these here on the table just in case I need it for something. I didn't need it this time. This one was clean. Don't fix something until it's broke. Okay guys, because once you contaminate a microscope, some of those hard to reach optics like up and in here or up and inside your turret head, it's such a pain to get those clean, okay? So just clean the surfaces that you can easily access, make sure that they're free from defects. Even a slight, slight crack or chip is going to scatter light in an unnatural way and it's going to cause um, hue or it's going to cause uh, light to bounce back at the, the person's eye in an irregular manner. So any defects whatsoever, that component has to be changed out. And that includes uh, grease contamination or something like that. If you can't get it clean, it's still got some sort of debris or a hue on it, gotta get rid of it, man. But that is a PM on a bright field microscope. Not too bad, right? All right, gather up all my consumables, put them in a glove, and now, all my contamination is contained. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. It's I know it's kind of a long one, but this is an in-depth procedure. Now, I know a lot of microscopes, you think that they're nice and simple. Take your time. Whenever you get dirty, you clean, clean your hands by changing out your gloves, and don't leave like greasy, contaminated stuff near where you're doing your PM. I place my stuff way over there, out of my way, because if you set a contaminated object on your table, you're going to touch it and then you're going to touch something else and now you have a cross contamination of some sort of debris oil whatever and there goes the next two hours of your life trying to clean that microscope i have done that <laughs> so guys that's uh, a microscope generic laboratory brightfield microscope pm thank you for watching